John, thanks so much for taking the time uh, to be with us today. Um, I think what I'd love to start with uh, is just a bit about your background and how you, you know, got to this point to be the uh, CEO and founder of Scratchpad. Uh, so going back a few years, um, I was the CFO of a company called Green Dot, and Green Dot was really the inventor of the prepaid debit card. And in the United States, we have millions of people that don't have regular bank accounts. So this was a great solution for them. They could basically get, take a card off the rack at a convenience store, load it with money, and then over time, really use it more and more as a regular bank account. Uh, the company grew very quickly. Um, had over six million active customers. Uh, it's now a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. Great. Um, after that I went over to Klarna, which is in Sweden, which is one of the most innovative companies in point of sale finance. Mm -hmm. um, I was the CFO there. They are, um, uh, they basically are one of the leaders in point of sale financing for e-commerce. So okay. they create a one-click buying experience for many websites. So the customers who are on the subway with a cell phone in their hand and they see something they liked online, can buy it with a single click, and they use credit to facilitate that transaction. Got it, got it. And who are the investors in Green Dot and uh, Klarna? Um, so early stage, Sequoia was, a, was an early investor in both Sequoia and Green Dot. Um, Technology Crossover Ventures was a big investor at, mm -hmm. at Green Dot. Mm -hmm. um, Total uh, mm -hmm. Technology Ventures, which is also an investor in, in Scratch, got it. Um, was at uh, Green Dot, General Atlantic, Mm -hmm. Klarna, and the list goes uh, goes on and on. Got it. Do you think uh, you think Sequoia will maybe uh, come into Scratch in the future? Uh, it's certainly uh, a possibility. Uh -huh. um, I think it's uh, I think it's interesting, and like like many investors now, I think um, uh, many investors have really tuned into the veterinary space. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of attractive features about it. It's mm -hmm. people are more likely to own pets. They're spending more on their pets. There's more money you can spend on your pets. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, I think it's uh, it's, it's non-cyclical. So uh, the people will spend money on their pets um, regardless of the economic stuff. Got it. Got um, it. So I didn't quite finish my my intro in yes, terms of yes. uh, where Scratch Pay comes into it. Um, so I think in my time at, at Klarna, I became very interested in basically how. Uh, payments and credit and the technology around providing credit can um, can increase sales and just take friction out of the buying experience and become a very strategic part of, of a business. Um, so coming back to the US after my time in Sweden, I was really interested in verticals or industries that I thought could really benefit from a new technology and a new type of, um, of financing. Mm -hmm. um, my co-founder, Caleb Morris, and I did a lot of research. We're both pet lovers, and, and Caleb actually has rescued many pets from mm -hmm. local pet shelters and even from a trash can behind his house once. Amazing, yeah. Um, so he was very tuned in to some of the challenges in the veterinary hospital particularly. Mm -hmm. And we decided that this was an industry that really needed a better, a better tool for payments. Got it. Um, here in the U.S., this year, people will spend about twenty-four billion dollars just on veterinary care. They'll mm -hmm. spend seventy to eighty billion dollars on their pets when you consider all of the other expenses. Mm -hmm. But just veterinary care is around twenty-four billion dollars. Um, the vast majority of that—that that is cash on the table that needs to be paid up front. Often, surprise transactions. These are procedures people. You didn't know your dog was going to eat a sock until your dog eats a sock. Right. And then you need yeah. to come up with a couple thousand dollars at mm -hmm. 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, so this was the, the pain point that we set out to solve. Um, today, uh, about 10% of that amount is paid for via point of sale financing. Mm -hmm. So a little over $2 billion is provided in, in financing at the clinic. Got it. Um, about $1 billion is paid for via insurance. I think that $2 billion with better products and services and 
easier application processes, that two mm -hmm. is going to grow to four or five over the next several years. And I think we're going to drive a lot of that growth because our product is so superior to the other options that are available on the market today. Got it. Got it. That's great. So, you know, Scratch right now is in a multi-billion dollar industry and you expect it to have exponential growth. Um, just going back to Caleb, so how did you meet Caleb? Um, I think you both went to Sanford GSB at different times. Uh, any any uh, information there would be appreciated. Uh, so when I was uh, uh, a young CFO at, at Green Dot, mm -hmm. um, we were always looking for superstar analysts with just mm -hmm. sort of great raw, you know, um, talent, intellectual curiosity, analytical skills, and one of our main. Um, um, spots for recruiting was Pomona College, which okay. is right down the street. Okay. So it. we hired Caleb yeah. out of college, okay. and uh, he came and he was uh, my favorite analyst and did mm -hmm. a lot of great work for me over several years. Yeah, uh, he went to Stanford Business School. Okay. I went to Harvard Business okay. School. Okay, got it. Yeah, um, but uh, and then I went to Klarna. He uh -huh. went to another startup. Right, and then we both found ourselves back in LA and, and reconnected. Got and, it. And I think uh, um, uh, it was. It was always clear that we worked very well together, but I think uh, as we started talking about startup ideas, it was clear that we'd be great co-founders mm -hmm. too, and that we just work really well together. Um, so what's the business model of Scratch, and what problem are you trying to solve? Right. Um, so uh, imagine that uh, you are a young professional, you have uh, a good job, but you probably don't have a lot of savings. You mm -hmm. may, if, as, a, as a millennial, mm -hmm. uh, you may not have many credit cards. Mm -hmm. um, millennials are less likely to have a credit card than other generations, like mm -hmm. my generation. Mm -hmm. um, so, but uh, you're very likely to have a pet before you have kids. Mm -hmm. So you have your beloved uh, Westie, and your beloved Westie eats something that he's not supposed to, let's mm -hmm. say, you run to the veterinarian late at night and you're going to need to do a $4,000 procedure. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you might not have the savings or, or, or the credit card, uh, the room on your credit card to pay for that. Mm -hmm. So you'll talk to the veter veterinarian about um, financing options. Mm -hmm. And um, what ScratchPay seeks to do is make it so easy that in a minimum number of clicks on your cell phone, you can get an approval to cover the full amount of the transaction. Got it. You'll get financing that ranges from uh, as low as 0% APR mm -hmm. for short-term plans mm -hmm. if you only need a couple of months and you can yep. pay for it out of a couple of paychecks. Okay. Um, to uh, a higher interest rate that could be mm -hmm. as high as in the 20s mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. if you want to extend payments out for, say, two years. Got it. The veterinarian also um, pitches in. Uh, mm -hmm. and they provide the other piece of the business model for mm -hmm. us. Okay. So we generate a fee from the clinic and we generate a fee from the customer. Mm -hmm. In the case of the short-term financing products, we mm -hmm. only make a fee from the clinic. Got it. Yep. Um, and the clinic's happy to, to pay for this service because otherwise this might be, they might have to send you home. Mm -hmm. And your dog could be at, at, you know, at risk. Um, it. And it could be a life-threatening situation. Mm -hmm. But because they don't have the tools to assess credit risk, they can't just take that credit risk on themselves. So they need a partner like us to come to step in and solve that problem for them. Got it. Um, so the business model is really about, like a bank, we, um, we borrow money, we lend money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we generate fee income, as I mentioned. We generate mm -hmm. interest income. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at, at this stage of our growth, our debt capital comes from mm -hmm. private investors mm -hmm. and funds like, like yours. So mm -hmm. You are our first... Uh, um, partner that provided, uh, you provided not only um, debt capital for mm -hmm. us, but also equity. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and over time, um, our balance sheet will grow, our cost of capital will come down, mm -hmm. our credit losses will also come down. Mm -hmm. um, this is an attractive, I'd say of all the, I've spent a lot of years in finance and consumer finance. Mm -hmm. Point of sale finance is really one of the most attractive from a, from a financial return standpoint. Yep. Um, in part because you have this two-sided business model where you have a merchant that really wants to close a sale mm -hmm. and you have a customer that really wants to purchase something and usually there's some urgency around it and that two-sided business model is, is a lot more attractive than say offering personal loans on the internet where I'm spending a lot of money to acquire customers and I mm -hmm. only generate revenue from one party. Yeah, so how, how large uh, is the market? Um, who are your target customers and why do you think Scratch will succeed in the long run? As I mentioned, the U.S. veterinary services market mm -hmm. is around $24 billion. Mm -hmm. um, Canada is probably in another $3, three billion and change. Mm -hmm. um, other markets that I think are addressable for us in the near term mm -hmm. are sort of other um, 
um, Australia, mm -hmm. UK, mm -hmm. New Zealand, and then I think um, there are attractive markets in both Asia and Europe okay. that I think would work well for us. Got it. Uh, but in the kind of in the near term, we're mm -hmm. really focused on the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so, call it twenty-seven billion dollars. Um, I think that probably most people will continue to pay for veterinary care mm -hmm. just on their credit card, um, really primarily on their credit or debit card for the foreseeable mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. But what you will see is a growing share is going to be paid for via point of sale financing. Got it. Yep. And one of the real drivers of that is that the average transaction size is growing so fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So whereas when I was a kid, we had a veterinarian who we went to for everything related to our pet. Mm -hmm. Now you have specialists, you have oncologists when you're, mm -hmm. if your pet gets cancer, mm -hmm. we have uh, radiologists, you have um, uh, almost every specialty that exists for humans now mm -hmm. exists for pets. So where a $1,000 bill used to be a very large bill for your pet mm -hmm. 15 years ago, it's very common to have $5,000 and above. Got it. Yep. And, and bills of that size require different ways of, of, of payment. That's, mm -hmm. Those are amounts that people just don't have mm -hmm. you know, lying around or the ability to put on their card at, at any given time. Got it. And for that reason, I think the share that's paid for via point of sale financing is going to rise from around 10% mm -hmm. to 20% over the years ahead. Mm -hmm. While the veterinary market is also growing very fast, it's growing it. at almost double the rate of GDP. Yeah. Wow. Um, so when you put those two factors together, this is already an attractive market, but it's mm -hmm. going to grow very fast over the next five to 10 years. Got it. Um, in terms of our our target customers, um, uh, in many ways, I think millennials are the uh, are the are really the ideal customers mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. um, they are the fastest growing group of pet owners. Mm -hmm. um, they wholeheartedly embrace their pets as a member of the family, mm -hmm. and they are quite willing to spend significant funds on the mm -hmm. on the health care for their pets. Yeah, um, they tend to have lower savings. They tend to have fewer or credit cards with lower balances, mm -hmm. and they're more inclined to accept new types of credit products. And mm -hmm. so our, if you think of our credit product, it's a um, specific use, it's for a, I'm gonna take out credit for a specific transaction and I'm gonna pay for it at a fixed interest rate with fixed payments over an yep. extended period of time. Yep. That's a different type of product than a credit card, right? I just want, I'm gonna carry an American Express card in my pocket with a revolving mm -hmm. line I'm going to put a bunch of money on it and just try to pay it down as fast as I can, but mm -hmm. probably carry a balance for an extended period of time and pay yep. a lot of interest. Got so it. it's a different type of product for a different mindset. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the type of product we offer is growing very fast, not only in veterinary, but in other segments as well. Got it. Um, it's a type of product that I think works well, particularly with, with these millennials that are, are our target market. Got it. Yeah, I think one thing for us, you know, we love how on trend scratch pay is, you know, targeting millennials in a very large market. Um, one thing that we like as well is just how sticky the solution is and how much traction you've been able to gain. We'd love to understand, you know, what percentage of veterinary care facilities you're covering in the U.S. Um, and, you know, why you think you're going to be able to outflank, you know, other competitors. Yeah, the, uh, the veterinary market is, is interesting, though, when we're going to talk about the provider landscape. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so there are about 27,000 veterinary clinics in the U.S. today. Mm -hmm. um, about 85 to 90 percent of those are still independently owned and operated. Mm -hmm. um, the share that are owned by major chains or consolidators is growing mm -hmm. fast, but it's Got still it. a, a pretty small share of the total. Okay. Um, uh, we, one of the uh, interesting things about our business is that even though we're small and we have a small sales team, mm -hmm. we've been able to grow very fast across this very fragmented landscape mm -hmm. where today we have about one in 10 veterinary clinics in the U.S. are already offering scratch pay. Wow. Okay. By the end of 2019, yep. we think we'll be close to one in four. Wow. Um, so with that really, I mean, uh, it's evidence of um, the fact that people are keenly aware of this of this problem. Mm -hmm. So if you are a hospital manager, a receptionist, a vet tech, mm -hmm. an owner of a hospital, mm -hmm. um, we didn't have to convince them that this was a problem that needed to be solved. Right. Yeah. They knew immediately that this was a problem that needed to be solved. Got it. They're almost all using what I'd say is kind of the next best thing or the only option on the market today, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is a credit card uh, product called Care Credit. Okay. 
but they were all very interested in launching an alternative that was simpler, mm -hmm. um, more transparent, mm -hmm. easier, takes less time for their staff. Mm -hmm. And for all those reasons, we've been able to pretty quickly establish uh, a beachhead, Got a large beachhead yeah. in the U.S. Yeah, so you're in 10% of the vets in the United States around there. That's and, right. And you've been able to outflank Care Credit, which is a large company. What do you think the main reasons are for that? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, so Care Credit's been around a long time. Mm -hmm. They've been the only show in town mm -hmm. for a long time. But they do not focus exclusively on veterinary. So okay. Care Credit started in dental. Got and it. That really is still their, their core market. Okay. Um, but they're also in every other type of elective medical that you can imagine. From, Got it. Uh, plastic surgery, vision, hearing, mm -hmm. um, hair replacement, you mm -hmm. name it, and mm -hmm. care credit is there. Mm -hmm. So their strategy has been to kind of go wide, give people a credit card that they can mm -hmm. use across a lot of different medical procedures. Mm -hmm. They've targeted a very uh, a prime customer segment. Okay. Um, they decline a lot of applicants. Mm -hmm. It's quite expensive um, to both the customer and to the clinic. Mm -hmm. It's a very profitable pro product for, yeah. for the parent, which right. is Synchrony Financial. Yeah. So some of the, the key things that really mm -hmm. um, uh, that made our product attractive, I mm -hmm. mean, one was that we were um, completely focused in this vertical of veterinary. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually helped us establish credibility with people in the veterinary space. Mm -hmm. They knew that we're here to stay, and we're dedicated to the space, yep. and that we're, we exist because we're mission focused. I mean, we right. really yeah. want to help dogs and cats and other pets mm -hmm. get access to the medical care they need. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really resonated with this market. Mm -hmm. um, they really like the operational simplicity of it. Mm -hmm. So there's no hardware that needs to be required. Mm -hmm. There's no plastic card. There's no swiping of a card. Right. Yep. Really, the client handles the process entirely over their own cell phone. Got it. Yep. And all the clinic has to do is direct them to the website or to the app. Mm -hmm. And then they just go into a private dashboard to finalize the transaction once the procedure's been performed. Got it. So operational simplicity was, mm -hmm. was really an important aspect of it. Um, they love the fact that we, on average, cost a little bit less to them in mm -hmm. their credit. Mm -hmm. We approve more clients. We've hired some of the smartest people in credit risk in approving people for credit in an online setting mm -hmm. using multiple data sources. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, Care Credit is more of a traditional FICO-based underwriter. Mm -hmm. So the clinics love the fact that we approve more people for financing. Got it. Yep. Um, and the clients really like the fact that these products are simple and straightforward, fixed mm -hmm. monthly payments, and that they can check what products they qualify for without affecting their credit. Mm -hmm. So Care Credit is a hard inquiry on your credit score when you mm -hmm. apply, even if you get turned down. Mm -hmm. It will negatively impact your credit. Mm -hmm. With Scratch Pay, you can apply, find out which options are available to you with no impact on your credit score. Got it. Got it. So all of these things have helped us build, I think, a strong, uh, um, you know, uh, and uh, come out of the gate pretty quickly in the veterinary mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I'd say, um, Really, uh, most clinics are, are interested in having an alternative to care credit. Mm -hmm. In many of them, we've become the go-to default option. So Great. care credit is now the backup option. Amazing, yeah. And I think the opportunity for a third player to come in the space is really closing now. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that we continue to move quickly and quickly get to large penetration of the veterinary market. And at mm -hmm. that point, I think it's going to be really a two-horse race. Got it. Yeah, I think that's it's really incredible, especially for investors in China, to understand that in the U.S., a smaller uh, company with incredible core technology innovation can theoretically outflank a very large company. And it seems like the main reason for that is you guys are really vertically focused on the pet care space, um, and you have some really incredible technology. Um, you know, obviously, though, it is important for even young startups to have partners. Um, so I'd love to hear about the most recent Series A financing that you raised, um, who your strategic investors were there, and just generally, you know, what partners are really helping you um, succeed. Right, right. Yeah, we have a, we have a couple important partners. Mm -hmm. um, one of them actually came in and, and led our A round. Mm -hmm. So the Mars Corporation, which mm -hmm. is best known for making candy, mm -hmm. they actually de derive more revenue from pets than they do from candy. Okay. Um, they, okay. How large is Mars? What what candy have they made? Uh, well, there's Mars bars, M and M's, okay, okay, um, Cadbury. Wow, okay. Which is, 
shoot, maybe it's not Cadbury. Many, no, many <laughs> brands of candy. Um, but they also own many brands of pet food. Okay. Like Whiskas and okay. Sheba. Okay. And then they also own a lot of pet hospitals. Okay. So big chains here in the States, like mm -hmm. Banfield, VCA, Blue Pearl, Pet Partners. Got it. And some in Europe, like okay. Anacura. Okay. Um, uh, so they're probably, I'd say, they're the largest operator of pet hospitals in the world. Got it. Um, so they launched a venture capital fund mm -hmm. recently called mm -hmm. the Companion Fund that's mm -hmm. focused exclusively on the pet space. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the first investment out of the Companion Fund. Wow. Um, that has given us access to the entire Mars family of companies mm -hmm. and to some really innovative people that are leading thinkers in the veterinary space. Got it. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I think... You know, you, you mentioned before, like, how can a small company compete with mm -hmm. such a big one? Mm -hmm. Well, we're smaller and nimbler, and we can, we can do things with our partners that are mm -hmm. much harder for a large incumbent to do. Got it. Yep. Um, for example, one of the uh, types of uh, products that's, that's very popular in the U.S. for mm -hmm. pet owners is mm -hmm. a wellness plan for your pet. Mm -hmm. So this is like an insurance plan, except that it covers wellness care. It doesn't mm -hmm. cover when your pet is sick. Got it. it covers yeah. things when your pet is healthy, like yeah. vaccinations and spaying and mm -hmm. teeth cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, many customers, though, are interested in having a, uh, a service like Scratch attached to the wellness plan. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit more harder for a big company to quickly innovate and come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. But during 2019, we are going to launch some partnerships with some of the largest wellness plans in the U.S. Got so it. that Scratch Pay would become an add-on feature. Got it. Um, and this is really important for the people who operate these wellness plans because mm -hmm. oftentimes this is a time when people churn out of the plan. Mm -hmm. They've been paying money every month and now my pet is sick and I have a large bill mm -hmm. and I kind of say, well, the wellness plan actually didn't help me that much when I, when I needed it now. Mm -hmm. But if you have a feature like scratch pay and you have a pre-approval that allows you to defer payment for a large bill, Got it. it's built into the wellness plan. Okay. What we think is that's going to keep people in the wellness plan. Got it. I mean, just to give you an example, the size of some of these plans, um, Banfield has a, mm -hmm. Banfield's a large chain of veterinary hospitals. Mm -hmm. They have a wellness plan called Optimum Wellness Plan. Okay. It has 2.2 million active customers mm -hmm. and generates a billion dollars a year of revenue mm -hmm. just on the premiums. Got it. Not wow. counting the money that people spend over and above it. Got so it. these are a really important, it's an important part of the veterinary industry, mm -hmm. and I think there's a real synergy between our product and those products, and uh, and, and we're able to innovate quickly and, and build on that. Got it. Great. So would you say uh, Mars Pet Care is the largest pet care company in the U.S.? Definitely. Got it. So really incredible to have them on the board. They're a fantastic yeah. partner to have on the board and to yeah. have as an investor. Got it. Another Great. important partner is mm -hmm. Trupanion, okay. which is the number two pet insurance company in the U.S., but it's okay. the fastest growing one and will probably soon be number one. Okay. Um, they are not an investor, but they are a mm -hmm. partner in terms of sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. um, they have a national sales force. Their sales representatives actually sell scratch pay into their partner clinics. Got it. Um, so that's a great endorsement, and it's great to have, have access to that kind of sales channel. So, um, you know, for us, you know, Star Capital, we try and be active investors. We try and help with things like uh, media marketing, PR, business development, raising subs and rounds of financing, um, you know, helping make introductions for subs and rounds of financing. Uh, anything you could talk about with your experience with Strike Capital uh, would be much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I met... Uh, Adam, we met pretty early on in the process, mm -hmm. so Scratch was a very, very new company at the yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, from that day until today, a few things have really impressed me. I think uh, kind of being nimble, responsive, mm -hmm. and flexible um, were uh, pretty, pretty unmatched. Um, you know, we had different needs, at, even at different stages over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. You know, we needed a a relatively small seed round to get up and running. Mm -hmm. And you really kind of helped anchor our seed round. Um, we needed a credit facility as we grew a little bit. You arranged a cre credit facility and became mm -hmm. our first debt investor as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you, you were an important investor in our A round as well, mm -hmm. as we were really looking more to institutional investors mm -hmm. to, to bring value to the table. Mm -hmm. um, so you've been, you've been a helpful partner really at all the stages of the company up to date. Um, I think uh, 
in terms of knowing investors and knowing entrepreneurs around mm -hmm. Southern California, mm -hmm. um, you're at, right at the top. I can't think of anyone else who is more connected and has provided more valuable introductions on that front. Um, and I think you have a lot of knowledge and experience in uh, financial technology in particular, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which has been great. You know, a lot of our investors don't have that. They have knowledge about the veterinary space. And they know about the pet world. Um, but it's great to have some investors that know financial technology quite well. Got it. Um, so uh, you've, been, you've been very helpful on, on all those fronts. Thank you so much, John. Really, really appreciate the time. Um, and yeah, I think for us, Scratch is one of our most exciting portfolio companies. We love um, that you guys are, are not only, you know, have an incredible business model, but are really doing good and saving the lives of thousands and thousands of pets. And, uh, you know, real privilege for us to work uh, with the founder of your caliber. And we're excited to support you as you continue to grow. Thank you. Thank you.